Just look in the mirror, don't know what to say, but I'm happy the man I is. I'm ready to go. It's that time. It's that time. It is that time. God damn, we back at it. It's finally. The top 25 albums of 2021 is here. The video is here. We've gone through the entire week and listened over some of my favorite songs, which was Tuesday, some of the honorable mentions, which was Wednesday, and now it's Thursday, two days before the end of the year. And now we're going over the top 25 albums of the year. This is all personal my opinion. This is all my favorites. This is not a statistical fact. I don't have a whole bunch of people going on and analyzing the albums along with me. But uh, you know, this is my personal favorites. You no, know? um, I'm gonna preface this as always that. I'm I'm personally more of a hip hop, rap, R&B, a little bit of soul, blues, and all that. So it's gonna be a combination. All these, all these albums are gonna revolve around the realm. I'm not really. I'm kind of into pop music a little bit, like Justin Bieber, Taylor Swift, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, so, but more so, more so into hip hop, into rap. So that's one of these albums gonna be kind of tailored to. And uh, yeah, I got the suit jacket on. It's actually a uh, jacket. It's a, it's a suit jacket, so it came a little professional because it's kind of like a war ceremony, man. We're closing out the year, going to my favorite albums. Once again, this is my personal opinion. This is not statistical fact. They may differ from yours. Um, I'm only going over a 10. I know it's supposed to be top 25. I'm only going over a 10. In the description down below is the full list. So you're going to get the preview. You can check down down below. There's also actually a total, I believe I counted right, 34 albums listed, but top 25 sounds better than the top 35 per se so we want to go over the top 10 albums and i'm gonna just go through every, every album and roughly a minute and a half two minutes just go over why i personally move my, my why i like it why i made it in my top 10 but i enjoyed it from it some of my favorite songs etc etc so all that talking going through that's happened to my top 25 albums of 2021 all right Coming in at number 10, we got J. Cole's The Off Season. And J. Cole The Off Season came in at, a, at, a, at an interesting time of the year because 2021 started off very, very slow. We got very few albums, very few highlights from various big known artists, underground artists. And it was just like when J. Cole released The Off Season, it's like the, the, the dam broke. It felt like the dam broke and all the water just rushing in, all the great albums, all the other artists said, okay, it's time to release our music. And he also released the album during May. That's usually when. Things start popping up, especially for summertime. Like people release their summer, their, their albums on the summer, and they release the off season. Man, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I feel like we got a combination of old J Cole, like Hungry J Cole, mixtape J Cole, and we got a combination of a uh, of album J Cole is more melodic, more thoughtful, more thought provoking. But it was also like he was he, the way he was snapping is like he had some hunger in him. I feel like he was actually snapping and sliding on some of the songs. Some of my favorite songs are Nine to Five South, which is the intro. My life is at Twenty One Savage on there. Applying pressure, that man was talking his shit. On Applying pressure, punching the clock, 100 mil, prize the devil, which had a little baby on there, combat, which you actually got as a single in 2020, let go of my hand, and close. So I thoroughly enjoyed that from J. Cole, man. Just having a combination of like the old J. Cole with the hungerness, the hunger to want to be the best, want to be the best best rapper here, trying to grow his band, etc., etc., but also still having the socially conscious, the most socially driven J. Cole that we got in the last few years on, his, on the way he's been making this album. So having them come together, that two versions of J. Cole coming together for an album in the offseason has me excited what he does. I think we're supposed to get the, the Fall Off and the Lost Boys potential albums. That remains to be seen. Hopefully, maybe we might get something from him properly. Now, he'd like to go every two years at the, at the, the very least uh, in between releases, but uh, I, the offseason J. Cole thoroughly enjoyed it, and it comes at number 10. Number 9, we got Isaiah Rashad, The House Is Burning. Now, it's been a long time since Isaiah Rashad released music, period, let alone a full album. And this album was thoroughly enjoyable from the beginning and the different singles, different features he had on there. And it was like, from, from TDE crew, I mean, the TDE crew hardly releases music. The only time we do is usually very good. And Isaiah Rashad, when he came up with this album, The House Is Burning, was very anticipated, very excited, and he definitely delivered on the album from the beats, the flows, the pockets. He'd be snapping on tracks. Some of my favorite tracks is R.P. Young, and the remix version, which he also got Juicy J on there. That was an absolutely solid track. Claymore, which has Mino on there. True Story, uh, Score, uh, and then the title is at TPH. So, thoroughly so enjoyed this this album from Isaiah Rashad. Definitely has me decided what he does in 2022. Hopefully he does like more features. Maybe we got may get a little EP or something like that, but I don't know. I thoroughly enjoy Isaiah Rashad. He has me decided, man. Uh, he just definitely one of those artists where like if you were to release more music more often, you'd definitely be in more conversations. But if people who know about him, they know about him. So Isaiah Rashad, House is Burning, comes in at number nine. At number eight, we got the recently released Chomp 
2. Now, Chomp 2 is the sequel to the original Chomp that came out in 2020. One of my favorite little EPs was in my honorable mentions of last year. And uh, he, he did it bigger and better because last year was just five tracks and we get a whole bunch of rappers on it, just rap on it. This is like rest of his echelon of peak rapping ability, snapping and rapping, lyrical spiritual miracle with bars, you know what I'm saying? And uh, he did it bigger and better with Chomp EP 2 with 14 total tracks, a lot more artists, old, new, presser, people that he looked up to and admired to, and all rapping on, on his, on his, on his crazy but deuce, deuce beats from primo uh ninth one eighth ninth wonder uh that's a primo uh hit boy There's so many uh uh harry frost so many great but absolutely solid producers that get on that album to produce and they get a whole bunch of rappers like the game jay the kids who've been on a future run of his own ever since the verses uh big sean wale joy bad it's just pat poo so many crazy artists and so many crazy producers with chomp pp too so i thoroughly enjoyed that for us just to have a solid rap album this is just a rap album it was some melodic songs in there because it's rushy thing to do melodic, but it's mostly it's mostly 90% rap, and I thoroughly enjoyed Ch Chomp 2 for Russ. Some of my favorite songs of Russ Chomp 2 is Sheep, which is a solo track for Russ, Bucket Hatlow, which had Pat Poos, Nothing New, who had The Game, Free, which had Big Crit and Snoop Dogg, Note to Self, which had Big Sean, Wale, and Joey Badass, and then Golden. Golden, he absolutely snapped on Golden, so I, th I thoroughly enjoyed that from Russ. He has me excited what he does in 2022, so Russ Chomp EP 2 thoroughly enjoyed it. At number seven, we got Kanye West, Donda, and the deluxe version as well. Thoroughly enjoyed Donda, my biggest thing. Okay, we're gonna get to that. I thoroughly enjoyed Kanye West, man. He's one of the greatest producers, one of the greatest musicians, one of the greatest musical artists of all time. The way he creates music from his rapping to singing, his curating of a whole bunch of different artists, his producing, beat making is just absolutely insane. One of the greatest underrated, well, he's he's, he's, he's rightly considered uh, one of the greatest producers of all time. He just happens to make great lyricism and gets a lot of people on this. And it's just like, it was just so long. 27 album songs was on the initial album. Then the deluxe, we got additional five. Honestly, obviously a couple of those songs had part twos on there, so different versions that had other artists hop on the track. So overall just 30 enjoy this is Kanye West man. He just he been doing this for so long. He always gonna make great music, he always gonna be one of those top artists on the year if he ever releases music, but he likes to take his time. Uh, I just thoroughly enjoyed the Kanye West from Donda. And uh, just some of my favorite songs, Off the Grid with Five Year Four just absolutely snapping. <laughs> that man be snapping on his beats. Uh, then we got Hurricane, which had a little baby, and The Weeknd. We broke Control 2, which is the part 2 version of the original Remote Control, which had Young Thug, and then the additional off uh, Kid Cudi. Moon, which had Kid Cudi and Don Tolliver. And Life of the Party was on the deluxe version, which had the magnificent verse with Andre 3K. So I thoroughly enjoy Donda from Kanye West, man. Has me society. He's, he's, I think he's more so a curator of now. Again, I think he should do this more often, get a whole bunch of people on this album to all snap, sing, rap, and just all have a good time, make good music. He's gonna make a solid production of be thumb and it's gonna be a vibe it's gonna be a good time so uh kanye west donda comes in at number seven coming in at number six we got Nas and the recently released magic Nas and hit boy came out with a third album in 18 months in magic absolutely insane that Nas and hit boy decided to come out with another project to close out 2021 for not only releasing one of the greatest albums of the year they created king disease 2 earlier this year back in august we're gonna get to that in a second thoroughly enjoyed that just this is like rapping rapping Nas. This is like something we didn't get from him since early on in his career like some ailmatic type stuff he was just absolutely snapping i enjoyed the entire album so i'm not gonna go through my favorite well okay some of my favorite songs were speeches that was the first track 4016 building uh dedicated and i'm missing another one wave gods which had uh asap rocky and uh, associated produced by dj premiere so i just absolutely just Nas was just absolutely snapping the beats by uh hit boy was absolutely crazy and what's made it even better is that yes a couple days ago they actually <laughs> Nas and hit boy actually posted a snippet from my reaction video so if you haven't seen that reaction to video please do check it out because they actually shared it on their both of their instagram profiles which is absolutely insane and it's just like Nas, man, he's one of the greatest lyricists, one of the greatest legends of all time. And for him and the hit boy to release not two projects in one year, three projects in 18 months is just absolutely insane. And Nas was just absolutely snapping. Hit boy was absolutely snapping the production. The move on to number five, number five, we got them again at not in a King Disease 2. Just once again, the reason why, if you want to know why I put King Disease 2 over Magic, because they're coming at five or six, five being King Disease 2, 
number six being Magic because King Disease 2 has more musical taste to it, you know, as opposed to as whereas Magic is just boom bap, rapping, snapping, rapping, relapping, and <laughs> Miracle Spiritual with bars on it. Whereas King Disease 2 is more musical style, you know, more, more fun vibe, you know, more enjoyable, you know, where it's supposed to, you know, it's, it's something you could play multiple, multiple times, where it's, where it's not as Magic, you probably get tired of it quickly because it's just Miracle Spiritual. I'm gonna hit you with the best bars of greatest of all time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's why I put King Disease 2. Uh, some of my favorite songs for King Disease 2 is The Pressure, EP and D2, which had the original EP and D members on it, and Eminem, Moments, Nobody, which he got Lauren Hill to come out of retirement. That's what you know was good. And now it's got Lauren Hill to come out of retirement. She, had, she delivered an absolutely solid verse. Brunch on Sundays in my Bible. So I thoroughly enjoy King Disease 2 and, uh, and uh, Magic. So they're coming in at 5 and 6. Coming in at number four, we got Little Sims. Sometimes I might be introvert. Now this is the first time I ever listened to Little Sims. People always uh, recommended her on Twitter and such, and saying how, how good she is. She's hailing from UK, so she's definitely on a different place. I never ventured off to. I'm starting to get into the UK scene just a little bit, slowly but surely, as uh, they release more music and they all migrate towards the US and put the stratosphere out there. And it's just like this album. This album's crazy. It's a. Uh, it's more sonically just absolutely driven. I remember the first time I heard the intro track. It felt like a soundtrack to a movie. It's not the intro to a movie, and she was just. That, that was just absolutely insane. I don't really particularly have a favorite song from this album. It's just the culmination of everything, telling the story. I feel like you, you, audio, you audibly, I don't think that's a word, you, you're listening to like a movie per se, where it was just everything is just coming together and it's all telling a story. And it's, that's what I loved about it. It all comes together, tells a story. It doesn't have that much replay value. We just pick out a single song. Oh, this is the favorite. This is the favorite. Just all of them coming together in a culmination, uh, making the album. And it just sounds so good. It's just, like I said, it sounds like you're listening to a movie. You create your own pictures, your own visuals in your own head. So, a little similar. Sometimes I might be introvert. Comes in at number four. All right, now we down to the final three. And coming in at number three, we got Dave. We're all in the alone and in this together. Dave is also in the UK like Little Sims. And this album, man, this album was so good. It was more so of him painting the picture, talk about mental health, talk about the social issues that's going on in the UK, talk about growing up as, as a, as a uh, fellow first-generation immigrant, growing up in, from, uh, his, I believe his family is originally from Nigeria or uh, African country, and they migrated into the UK. So he's talking about the struggle, everything going on there, and between the black people in, in, in England and the whole government system. So it was a different perspective, per se, I'm always used to the politics and the social issues in the U.S. So it was always nice to get a, a perspective on a U.K. person, talk about the social issues in the U.S., but also on a, on a different side in the U.K. And it was just him, man, just talk about the, the songs. It was absolutely beautiful, sounds so well. Some of my favorite songs was the intro track, We All Alone, that's absolutely beautiful, the perspectives he told, talk about the person who looked up to them, thinking, oh, what should I do, should I do? And he's like, man, you should do what you think you should do, be on your own. And he's thinking to himself, ah, I don't know if I would do that, but it's just the whole battle back and forth. Uh, in the fire, which was like sounded like a Kanye West song, like that. The production in the fire was absolutely insane. And then we got 22 1, look at the time, it's 22 1. Thirdly, drew that track, and the Survivor's Guild it was, uh, I believe, the outro track is our 30 drew that. So it was just like, just the sonically, the music, the the, the issues, the, the the topics he was talking about from Dave when we're all alone in this together. I just thoroughly enjoyed that, and so that's why it comes in at number three. Coming in at number two, we got "Call Me If You Get Lost" by Tyler the Creator. Man, I remember when this, when this album first came out. You know, Tyler the Creator releases his albums about every two years or so. So we first teased once he came out of out of his black hole, his black cave, wherever he came from, that he's gonna release the album. That's when we know we start we getting our hands in. Like, yeah, he about to start cooking. He started cooking the production. Production was absolutely insane. This man was rapping, rapping. He was snapping a pavin. This man got DJ drama <laughs> to, 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 to direct the whole thing. It was just absolutely insane. Just having the new style, the old style, DJ drama with the narration just all coming together. And he was definitely creating something unique. Have him rapping, then getting the different features, the crazy features. So some, and then just having them all come together was absolutely insane. Some of my favorite songs, What's Your Name, Girlfriend? What's Your Name? Which had Ty Dolla Sign, NBA Young Boy, Massa, Will shy which will shy i hate and love at the same time i love it because it's an eight minute monologue by by tyler the creator just just letting go of his thoughts just pin the pad just letting go of his thoughts but also like the the the, the, the mixing and the mastering on it was so bad but he wanted that he wanted to be like that on purpose so something i just have to tolerate but i just i just thoroughly enjoyed the title of the creator man some of the songs were sweet which had uh sweet and the other version i forgot the title of it which had brent fires on there 
The verse from Lil Wayne was absolutely insane. Uh, Tizo touchdown was absolutely insane. Just, just all, everything all coming together for Call Me If You Get Lost is all absolutely insane. Tyler Creator as a producer, a curator a little bit here, which is absolutely insane. He has me excited what he does. Probably not until 2023, <laughs> spring, spring, summer slash summertime 2023. But uh, Call Me If You Get Lost by Tyler the Creator comes in at number two. And to close it out, coming at number one. Hasn't changed since the reaction video, so Silk Sonic comes in at number one. It's just I remember when it was first announced that that Bruno Mars, Anderson Pac were coming together and make it. I'm just like Bruno Mars, Anderson Pac coming together. They both alone make great music. Having them come together, oh yeah, this is probably gonna be album of the year caliber. It's gonna be absolutely insane. They released Leave the Door Open, which absolutely blew off that they milked the hell out of it they make the hell out of it so much that they ain't wait until about five months later to release skate <laughs> which skate was one of my least favorite tracks from the album but then uh and i'm just like i was hoping they release it by like summertime like mid mid to late summer at the latest but they never released it then it's like announced that it's not gonna come out till next year then they finally came out and said yeah it's coming out in november which i was like it was an interesting time to come out in november but finally came out we got smoking out the window as the lead single and I thoroughly enjoyed that and then the album finally came I did a full reaction to the rest of the songs because we got uh, the initial four songs and then we got five other songs I did the whole reaction to that it was just absolutely insane. Brutal Mars, and it's a pot going back and forth on some tracks. Brutal Mars dominated some tracks, and it's a pot dominating some tracks. Sonic, the live instrumentals was absolutely insane. Boosted Collins on on the, on the narration and direction, and then you had the Thundercat feature, which I still to this day cannot hear his vocals on that track. But uh, this is absolutely insane. Some of my favorite tracks. Leave the door open, of course. Smoking out the window. Uh, Fly as me, which is definitely an Anderson Pac dominated track after last mic. And so, so much more. I just thoroughly enjoyed the whole album. That song, that album was actually short too. Nine songs, which is perfect. Well, eight if you don't count the intro. It was nine total songs. It was just, just perfectly, perfectly made, perfectly matched. Something that we gonna remember for many, many, many years to come. And that's why it comes in at number one. So that's uh yeah, that's number one. Silk Sonic coming out at number one, and that completes my favorite top albums of 2021. Like I said, I only went through the, the uh, my my for top ten. The full list is down below. This is a total of 34. And uh, let me know how, what you think about it. Do you think I'm totally wrong in my listings? Some things should have been in the top ten. So I mean, some things should have been left out. Is J. Cole the off season forgettable, etc. etc. Let me know down below. Let me know what was your favorite albums, your top 10, your top 25, whatever, whatever. And just let me know. And this, uh, this this close out the week. Um, actually tomorrow we're gonna go through the best reactions. With some of my best reactions from 2021. So I'm gonna go through all my videos to see which ones had the best reactions and compile them together. But that's gonna be coming out tomorrow. But let me know what you think about my top 25 albums of 2021. So. And if you like the video, please like the video. I got more content like this always coming soon. So please subscribe. <sighs> Top 25 albums of 2021. We got some good music, y'all. We got some good music. I'll see you next video. Peace.